Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. If you purchased media from the Discovery Channel on your PlayStation over the last decade, I've got some bad news for you. On December 31st, the Discovery Channel is going to be removing all of their content from PlayStation. You will not be able to watch it even if you paid for it. This is kind of the worst case scenario, and right now it doesn't appear that the Discovery Channel is going to try to make anyone whole. In this video, we're going to dive into the story and see what's impacted by it, but we're also going to look at ways that you can protect the things that you pay for. And of course, we'll talk a lot about physical media in that discussion. Let's get to it. So let's take a look at what Sony sent out to its users. A very terse email here saying that as of December 31st, 2023, due to our content licensing arrangements with content providers, you will no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased Discovery content, and the content's going to be removed from your video library but they do sincerely thank you for your continued support. Thanks a lot. And if you go on to the link that they have below it, you can see just how many shows are impacted by this, including popular shows like the Mythbusters. And if you bought the whole season of the Mythbusters, for example, that's probably at least 100 bucks right there, and you've lost all of that value. And again, Discovery has not responded to my request just yet about what's going to happen with these users. This is one of the problems when you release a big announcement like this on a Friday afternoon. There's no way to get answers on this. So if I do hear back from Discovery, I'll let you know what they said. But right now, anything you paid for is going to be gone after the 31st of December. So what can users do about this? Well, unfortunately, not much, because when you purchase digital media on any of these major platforms, you're not actually buying a disc or something you can own and keep. You're buying access to a license. That includes things like movies, TV shows, but also video games and music as well. So what are some solutions to this media ownership problem? Well, I think there are a number of ways you can solve this problem. I'm gonna focus on the legal ones in this video because I don't wanna get my uh, channel hit with some kind of strike or whatever, but I'll let you all pontificate some alternatives in the comment stream. But one thing these PlayStation users could do, and I think they would be within their rights legally to do so, is grab OBS, plug their PlayStation into their computer, and if they have the time, manually capture all of these shows so that they can preserve them, and that would be allowable because it is a home recording. Now, of course, the best way to ensure that you have control over your media is to buy it physically. I've been buying movies physically since I was a little kid, starting with VHS, going to Laserdisc, and now, of course, Blu-rays. And the other day, for example, I picked up this copy of Picard, which is the latest season, which is awesome. And in addition to getting the show in its best quality, Nobody's gonna be able to take this away from me because I have the physical media on hand. And one of the things that's still happening is that the creators really like issuing these DVD and Blu-ray releases because they can include special content and additional features. So you can actually watch it a couple of different times and get a lot more out of what you are watching. And this has, of course, been a staple of DVD releases for at least the last 20 years or so. And of course, the best part about having things on physical disc is that I can watch them whenever I want without having to pay a subscription fee. But there's some problems. One is that not every TV show that I like has a Blu-ray release, but also we're starting to see some streaming services take things off of their services, even shows that they produce themselves. HBO is a great example of that. And the other problem is that there is a declining market for physical media sales. It's not like you can't find these things out there. They're available, but people are not buying them as much because they prefer the all-you-can-eat subscription. I know a lot of you watching have the opposite opinion, but a majority of the market feels that way. And even Best Buy is considering pulling all of their physical DVD and Blu-ray discs out of their stores to make room for more inventory that might move a little faster. So we've got some, some headwinds ahead here. But the creative side of the industry still prefers physical, and it's not just the ownership component, it's that a Blu-ray disc, especially a 4K Blu-ray disc, can provide a superior video and audio standard to what you might stream over the internet. You have a much higher bit rate, you have lossless audio, it is a much better experience, especially if you have a nice home theater system. One recent example of that is Christopher Nolan, who was urging his fans to buy his new movie, Oppenheimer, because he says, so no evil streaming service can come and steal it from you. And it looks like a lot of people heard his call because they are having to replenish the inventory. Oppenheimer on Blu-ray sold out, although it looks like inventory is returning now. 
but this was a really good sign that there is some market out there for physical media. And I suspect what might happen with this is that Blu-ray discs might become the laser disc of the 21st century here. Back in the 90s, laser discs were not anywhere near the top of the market insofar as physical media purchases, but there was enough people out there willing to buy them that directors and studios put a lot of effort into making some really awesome releases that had some very high quality and a lot of nice physical add-ons like nice books and behind the scenes things and whatever. So I think there's hope here, but we consumers need to purchase this stuff in order to make sure there is a market for it. And when you buy one of these Blu-rays now, you get a lot of options even in the box. So for example, the Oppenheimer Blu-ray and many of the other movies on the market give you a 4K Ultra HD disc they also give you a 1080p disc that you can play on a 1080p television or whatever. And you also get a digital code. And this code is usually tied into one of the services out there, but more frequently now, another service called Movies Anywhere. And this is something, if you're not using it, you should sign up for immediately. And what Movies Anywhere does is it allows you to connect all of your digital storefronts together. So for example, I got a bunch of free movies at one point on iTunes or Vudu or one of those services. And when I connected everything up, the Peanuts movie, for example, which was only on one service when I signed up, now shows up in all of my services once I connected them together. Movies Anywhere is supported by most of the major studios, including Sony, Universal, Walt Disney, and believe it or not, Warner Brothers, who's pulling their content off of Sony PlayStation. Uh, but no, it is only movies and not TV shows, which really stinks. And I hope that maybe we see the TV shows get added to something similar to this in the future. And it supports a number of different digital platforms. So I have accounts on Apple TV, Prime Video, Vudu, and Microsoft, and all of those are connected. So if I boot up my Xbox, I can get access to my movies natively there. Of course, these are the streaming versions, but still it's nice to have that as an option. And you can also connect up Google Play, Xfinity, Verizon, and DirecTV. Now, if you have the physical media, you are within your rights to copy the media onto your personal server. There's some legality questions involving DVDs and Blu-rays, and we can save that for another time. But here's an AI representation of me ripping some of my movies onto a computer. I like to store my movies in MKV format, and I use a tool called Make MKV, and you can learn more about it on the link you see on screen here. The 1080p Blu-rays are pretty easy to work with. The 4K ones do require that you have a, a compatible Blu-ray reader along with maybe some custom firmware. It's a little more involved these days on the 4K stuff, but the 1080p stuff is pretty easy. Another tool that I like for DVDs is called Handbrake. And what Handbrake does is it converts the MPEG-2 video on a DVD to MP4, and it does it pretty seamlessly with a bunch of built-in templates for that conversion, and it works pretty quick on modern computers. And if you don't want to go through the hassle of ripping all of your movies, because it does take some time, you can actually use Voodoo's service called Disk to Digital. This is really neat. So what you do is you scan the back of your movies, basically the UPC code on the back, and then you can purchase a digital license to that movie from anywhere from two to five dollars. So for example, if you have a DVD, you can get the HD version for five dollars plus tax. That'll show up in your Voodoo account, but if the movie is on Movies Anywhere, it then will appear on all your other accounts as well. It's not as good as ripping because you don't get a DRM-free file, but if you're somebody who typically watches on one of these services, it's a great and quick and easy way to get a movie on those services for just a couple of bucks. Now, Disc to Digital, as far as I know, is just for movies and not television shows, so you will have to manually rip those TV show box sets if you want to get them onto your server. Now, what about streaming services? Well, there's one service that I know about, and I'm hoping maybe some of you have some alternatives also. Play On has been around now for probably five or six years. I'm surprised they haven't been sued out of existence just yet. They let you, believe it or not, record video from streaming services, and you can basically have their software pull down an entire season of a show, and it works. Now, I reviewed this a couple of years ago, and the company did something a little sketchy, which is why I'm hesitant to recommend them. So I purchased a lifetime license from Play On, which presumably would have me using the software in perpetuity. They then changed their product from whatever they had before to something that they now call Play On Home and Play On Cloud. And because they changed the product and they stopped updating the original version that I purchased, my lifetime license has no value anymore. Talk about discovery here. So that's why I'm a little reluctant to recommend them. But 
it does work remarkably well. And if you subscribe to their service, I think it's five bucks a month for the home version, you can capture 1080p video from a large number of services. Now it does record the ads because it's pulling the video directly from the service. And I don't think they're bypassing the encryption, which is why they're able to get away with this. So whatever comes down is what it's recording, but it does work and it's pretty cool that it does. You can see my review of the prior version here at lon.tv slash play on review. Now, what about legalities? Well, again, they haven't been sued out of existence after almost half a decade, and they claim that they're just a DVR, and they believe they're basically protected by the big Sony Corp versus Universal Studios, Inc., uh, which happened back in 1984. This was the Betamax ca case about home recording, and it was apparently another case in 1999, which was the uh, Diamond MP3 player that everybody was suing people over, so they are basically hanging their hat up on those two big decisions. They also say that it's a fair use. That one might be more of a stretch, but that's what they're saying is protecting them from a legal standpoint. What's not clear though is whether or not the terms of service in those streaming services allow you to do this. So for example, if Netflix detects you downloading content with this tool, they could decide to cancel your account. That's within their rights. Additionally, it's not clear what the legalities are after you unsubscribe from Netflix and still retain the media that you recorded. But if you're looking for some way to basically archive some of your favorite shows from streaming services, Play On might be a way to do it. Now, I would love to know what you are doing to preserve your digital purchases. I will probably do a follow-up video of some other legal suggestions. I'm definitely looking for an alternative to Play On given the fact that my lifetime license is now worth nothing. So let me know down in the comments section how you're preserving things and maybe we'll do a follow-up video with more detail with some of these solutions. And that is gonna do it for this look at Discovery's deletion of PlayStation content. I am sure there will be many more stories like this in the years ahead. We're hitting over a decade now of being able to purchase media digitally. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. Buckle up, but there are some ways you can preserve your media. And of course, the best way is to buy it physically. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. I'm finally feeling better, by the way. I know a lot of you have noticed I haven't sounded so great. I've been sick for three weeks almost with apparently bronchitis. I finally listened to my wife and went to the doctor. So I'm on the mend, but it's gonna be a few more days of a raspy voice here, but I'm doing good. We'll talk to you soon, and thanks again for tuning in. See you next time. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.